Hi everyone, hope you are doing well from whatever you are watching this channel, depending on your time zone. Now, yesterday the DAPK party was celebrating their first anniversary. And uh, during that time, Eugene Wamalwa, who has been the patron of the party, used that opportunity, number one, to declare his interest to run for the presidency in 2027. Secondly, he used that opportunity to take over the party leadership from Wafula Wamunyenye. So currently, as we are speaking now, Eugene Wamalwa is going to be the next DAPK party leader. So he'll be negotiating as a principal in case he, he will happen to go into another coalition as a principal, but not using another person on his behalf. And this is what Eugene Wamalwa had to say during that time. We have had a very good chat with our leadership that after we conclude our NDC, you will be having a presidential candidate of DAPK. I am truly honored that my colleagues have requested me and that since the 10 years I have worked with the, as a cabinet secretary of different sectors, I am now coming back to politics and when we start that journey, in January, I will be ready. He continued to say, We believe we are a party of the future of the Western because the ANC and Ford Kenya are now captured in Kenya Kwanza and there is a vacuum growing and we want to grow into it. And also, they are not going to fill presidential candidate, both of them. He said they will be backing the president and uh, we are not part of the 2047 but rather we are going for this in 2027 <laughs> now after this indeed to confirm that eugene omalwa has taken over party leadership this is what the dapk party tweeted in fact there is a photo of eugene omalwa and this was shared by the nation where they quoted Eugene Omalwa, I will challenge Ruto for the presidency in 2027. And this is what DAP party is saying. We have officially endorsed our patron, Honorable Eugene Omalwa, to take over party leadership and run for the presidency in 2027. May the grand march begin. So that is the official tweet handle of the DAPK party. And they have spoken their mind. They are officially handed over party leadership to Eugene Omalwa. To that level, Eugene Omalwa is a clever person. Finally, he has successfully taken over his party after forming and using Ofula um, Wamunini as a clone. <laughs> so the question is, is Eugene Amalwa serious about the 2027 general election? Will he be on ballot? Or what is he up to? That is what we want to try and analyze here. But before we go deep into that, just a quick request for those who are watching and you have not yet subscribed, please consider subscribing. Returning subscribers, thank you so much. And to all our viewers, please give this video a thumbs up. Thank you and back to this discussion. Now, for those who don't know much more about the DAP party, here is the truth. It is one year old, true. The same party managed to get one governor. That is the Transoya governor. The same party managed to get two deputy governors. The Transoya deputy governor and the Kakamega deputy governor, uh, Ayub Savula. And then the party managed to get five members of parliament. One in Kakamega, our Guinea in Bungoma, and then lastly, the party managed to get 40 members of county assembly mcs they don't get any any woman rep no any senator that's the history of dap party now this is a party that was formed almost i think eight months to general election six or eight months there so it is just still a new political party and i can tell you Eugene Omalu was lucky, was lucky to occupy the vacuum and support Raila Molodinga by the time when Mudavadi and Watangula 
decamped to William Ruto side. And the last thing was that Eugene alikuwa amekwamilia kwa koti la Raila Amolo Odinga to sell the DAPK party as simple as that and in fact he had captured Kakamega so strongly because everyone who had come from ANC party wanted to support Raila Amolo Odinga through DAPK but i don't know Raila in his own wisdom managed to maneuver his way and get all those members of parliament who had come from ANC party to ODM party otherwise as we're speaking now maybe DAP party will be enjoying up to a support of maybe 15 members of parliament there or, or more than that so the question is is Eugene Omanda serious about to, about becoming a presidential candidate and will he really pull numbers <laughs> here's the truth in case Raila Molodinga will be on ballot in 2027 then it is going to be a huge mistake for Eugene Omalwa to compete alongside Raila Odinga and William Ruto in that election. But if Raila Amolo Odinga will not be on ballot, maybe he will endorse Kalonzo or someone else, then for Eugene Omalwa to run for the presidency, it is going to be significant. If really he can pull resources and run a proper campaign, focus much more in the Western region to get your numbers right because... I don't see Eugene Omalo having enough money to run a campaign across the country. So he can focus on regional politics to pull numbers. So that's the only way. But when Raila is on ballot, a big mistake. A big mistake why? Eugene was able to sell DAPK party because of the brand Raila Molo Dinga. Without that, there's no way anyone was going to buy into DAPK party. <laughs> So going against the same person whom you used, you used as a ladder to climb up it is going to be a serious mistake which will come with a serious injury. I'm saying this because we have seen what NC party and Mselem Dabadi has gone through. By the time he supported Raila Mono Dinga, NC managed to gun 15 members of parliament to senators. And if you add the nominated numbers, it was going up to 17 positions in the National Assembly. But by the time he moved away from Raila Mondo Dinga, we understand the tragedy that came to the ANC party. Because as we are speaking now, I think ANC has up to seven members of parliament, something like that. Seven members of parliament with one governor, no senator. So you see, they were reduced to size. But I am certain that if Mudavadi could have continued to work with Raila Odinga, as we are speaking now, I don't think if Raila would have had that much interest in Western politics, those selective seats, especially in Kakamega and Vihiga, I think Raila could have seized the ground from Salim Mudavadi because already ANC had captured Kakamega. It had more numbers than ODM and Kakamega in 2017. It was going to be very easy for Raila to leave it for him and again just help him to grow in preparation for maybe 2027 or 2032 there. So he messed up. Though, in as much he lost in terms of having numbers, still he gained to become the prime cabinet secretary. So he lost in one way, but in another way, he still has a chance to grow. So for him, it was a little bit better. That might happen for Eugene Omalo. That's why I'm bringing in that issue of Musalem Dabad. Number three, the influence of Francis Atuoli. Eugene Omalo was able to maneuver his way because of Raila and number two, Eugene, uh, Francis Atuoli. Atuoli played a pivot role on the launch and again, um, advertisement of the DAPK party. And again, when it came to negotiating, Atwoli played, played a pivot role in that party. As we're speaking now, Atwoli is not with the Eugene Oman. Seemingly, Atwoli might be supporting William Samay Ruto in 2027 because of his own personal interest to safeguard his job 
and of course properties and other things. So hata kuwa na Eugene Wamalo. So Eugene Wamalo has to ask himself a question. The atwali who supported me is not with me. Do I have enough courage, resources, and can I negotiate my way if I want to run for the presidency? If yes, he should go. And if no, he has to think how he need to play around for 2027 general election. Then lastly, the same question Eugene Omalo was asking Musalem Dabadi and Senator Wetangula, Yakwamba, what have you done for the Mulembe nation for you to come for their support? The same question will be posed at him. If you want to run for the president, you have served for 10 good years in Uhuru Kenyatta's government. What have you done for the Luya nation for them to give you their vote? If he has the answer, he will tell us. If he don't have, then he, he will also face another rough time. Because I'm sure there are no tangible things Eugene Wamalwa has done with that 10 years of serving in Uhuru Kenyatta's government. Kama ni miasi likuwe meanguka. Kama ni bitugani, utuliona wakiuza pan paper. So it's like Western completely died economically. 